that I find you valuable, and then you say what? You have value. We all do. Right? They might not be the same that you have, right? But we all have them. Expressive individualism. What does that mean? It's something that sets you apart from everybody else. Mm. Even when we do crazy stuff like make students wear uniforms. Because you know when everybody wears uniforms, they all behave. That's not true. Right? And we're trying to stagnate them, right? But you always have the one that's going to do what? Girls do it well if they have, particularly in elementary school, if they wear uniforms, what are they still doing? Put all kinds of stuff in the chair. Oh, yeah. Scarves. Like my daughter, when we were wearing uniforms, she's like, oh, can I get a different stripe color tights? Yes. <laughs> Because there has to be some, what, individualism here, right? So you're going to start doing it. Again, I was working in some, you know, some very hard to staff schools. Then when you start doing it, and we think that it's going to cut down on gang behavior, they still do crazy stuff. Like if you point your tennis shoe, the top of your <laughs> string this way, it's like, oh my god, right? But that expressive individual has to be there. Oral tradition. And again, when we're talking about tribal people, oral, meaning what? It's a lot of talking. Right? And not one person, not a dialogue, but what? And not a monologue, but what? A dialogue, a dialogue right? Mm -hmm. Most of the stories, particularly when you're talking about that little boy in that picture, look at the communication, oral. It's like, oh my goodness, the stories, the engagement. Most little kids love when you do what? Just storytelling, right? You can put it, and if you're expressive, right? Children, oh my God, and they see it, right? By fourth or fifth grade, we stop to open the book, turn to page 12, read it yourself, <laughs> right? And then we say stuff like what? Don't talk, right? Because if I'm reading something and I really like it, ultimately I want to say what? Did you read this? Are you on page 12? Right? Stop it, right? We don't do it. And social time. What? else do we have to do other than socialize? In middle school, middle grades, right? Middle school is not about learning. It's about socialization, right? It's ultimately, this is where I learned through what? Socialization. Everything, I was a middle school principal for nine years. I learned more in those nine years than I think I've learned in, throughout doctorate, anything. Because it's like, okay, you're talking about hormones, you're talking about insecurities, this is the time where I have to do what? All of my classes had to be what? Social. Social. Now, what does that say? All of my AP teachers, I'm like, oh, why don't you start? And that was during the time of MySpace. MySpace kept up so much mess at the school. The drama, right? It was like, they start bullying each other. But you know why? It's because every other institution has embraced technology except for education. We want to say, they can't bring their phones. They can't do that. Mm -hmm. Why not? Right? I got one teacher to commit to. I was like, okay, let's use the technology. Let them use their phones in this class, right? What are they going to use the phones for? They're going to use it to what? Text. Right? So this is what we do. We started with Romeo and Juliet, right? You read the story? Tell me about it. Tell me the premise. <laughs> oh my goodness. Romeo and Juliet, yes. Uh, basically, uh, two families that hate each other and the two lovers kill themselves with the man. They hate each other because what? One, they're from the different sides of the tracks. Yeah. Right? Uh, okay, if you, when you get old enough and you have a daughter and you come to a certain level, you're like, I don't want her with him. Right? <laughs> He's not of the right caliber. Okay? Right? So you have to break it down, right? So anyway, we go through this whole thing, and we start with the opening, right? Ah, oh, what light through yonder window breaks? Mr. Allen, did you read the story? You don't remember? Ah, oh, what light through yonder window breaks? Mr. Poe, you remember what that was? In the scene? It's my fair Juliet, the light. Oh. Fair Juliet. Okay, but let's break down that whole scene. The party was broken up, right? He wasn't supposed to be there the day found out he was there, and what? Chaos ensued. He doubles back and he finds out what? Where she is, right? In her bedroom. Watch, plot thickens. So undoubtedly, in this big castle, he knew where her bedroom was, right? So he may have been there before, right? 
<laughs> However, she comes out, and what do we see? Ah, what light through yonder window breaks? What was he saying, Mr. Allen? In layman's term. Woo! Look at that. Woo! Up in that window. In the light. The silhouette, right? <laughs> Mr. Hollis, the silhouette. Anytime Beyonce comes out, before she comes out, what do you see? <laughs> right? Ah, what light through yonder window breaks. That's what it is, right? And Thank God you, that was just Captain <laughs> 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 Just be sure we send that out on the hashtag. Right. Oh, yeah, and then what happens? Then thing. she comes out and she says, oh, Romeo, Romeo, what? Wow. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and what? Refuse, Refuse thy name. Oh, who cares if you're a Jackson and I'm a Johnson? <laughs> right? And then she says, what? A rose by any other name with what? Smell is sweet. It doesn't matter. You could be a daffodil. I just want you. <laughs> right? Forget everybody. Deny that father. Just forget that. And let's be together, boo. Right? So we take this whole idea, right? And now I'm going to engage you more. I'm going to say what? You are Juliet and you are Romeo. Text her. Uh, hashtag. What would be your hashtag? Or right, you're Juliet. Right, we're going to take the character. Hashtag, you're Juliet, you're Romeo. Hashtag what? Hashtag, meet me. <laughs> oh, stop. Yes. Yes. Hashtag? Yes. Romeo. I will be there for you. Boom. All right. Now, look at how we're not taking this. Now, Miss Coles, you are the mother to Juliet. Hashtag. She better not. Boom. Hashtag better not. Friar. Oh, yeah. The friar. What did he do? He accommodated. He gave advice. He gave advice. And ultimately, what happened with this advice? So is that what we're going to do? Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe we could collaborate. Okay, so hashtag maybe we could work this out. Maybe we could work this out. All right. So if I then start again engaging them in this social perspective, right? Because now I'm connecting to where you are, right? But I'm also now making you get into the idea of the character. Because it could be hashtag, mm, it's poison. <laughs> right? So again, you're, you're making them dissect. And the whole idea, okay, it's oral, right? It wasn't just... Here, right? So again, these type of interactions occur in the bottom shop because again, I can take this whole story because a lot of times, particularly in that, and you, the reason why you don't remember is because of the way it was taught to you. It's like, oh. right? These and thou and never really want to hear it, right? But somebody had to break the thing down. It's like, oh, it's the same story. You like somebody from the side of the track, or daddy don't want you to come in. Boom. West Side Story. West Side Story. Right? So then I start making you see the other perspective. West Side Story. What other story? Hmm. The Outsiders. The Outsiders. Right? So again, look at now. What is going on right now? There's co narration, right? So in a class, we don't like co narration. It's like this builds on this one. When you start hashtagging, look, well, he didn't ask me my hashtag. Yes, ma'am, what was your hashtag? And who was your character? Jamila and Julia's mom going, better not. Better not. And I was like, she's not good enough for my son. Okay. Oh, hashtag. What's wrong with my son? Boom. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So how do you then get into the mind of the other person? And again, in a barbershop or a beauty shop, that makes you have to then negotiate, right? Because in a barbershop, particularly, the person that is the loudest or the longest might not be the right Mm -hmm. Right? But then somebody said, mm, I don't really think that's true. What? So again, if you negotiate, right? Because now I need to see what, hmm, there's something else. I didn't even think about that because she's like, well, what's wrong with my son? Right? <laughs> Hashtag, woo, we don't want to be connected to you. <laughs> right? Same thing, so that's social time. So how do we build that in, particularly for middle schoolers? It has to be there. And we have to engage where they are. Right? Now, I didn't say particularly young men, but you have to be very cognizant of how you engage in those social networks, 
right? But you need to make them your friend. How do we befriend those social networks, right? Because they, we could have even set up a Twitter or a Facebook, but you have to do it in what, what is those, what are those things called? The um, avatar, right? And your avatar can only be the characters from the story, right? Hmm, right? All of that, the social, and the learning is still occurring, right? Because now, I'm going to have to read up to see what, we didn't even talk about who, um, Marcelio? Marcelo. Marcelo, who was he? Um, I think he was one of the cousins. Of the cousin of who? Juliet or uh, Romeo's cousin. Romeo's cousin. Let's have a hashtag for him. Uh, hashtag, bro, where are you, where are you at? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you with? It could be a one thing that we never really got into his mindset, but he could have been jealous too. It's like he may have wanted Julia himself, <laughs> right? He may have been in with the fryer, double up with that poison. Like that one. You never know, right? So then, how do you dissect that? Now, one of the things we really wanted to look at the structural comparisons of the barbershop and school. At the barbershop, you have hearty, hearty greetings, the barber is familiar with the regular customers, right? Let's look at that against the conventions of a school. Students are encouraged to do what? Most of the day. Be quiet. Right? Look at how we do, particularly at, again at a middle school. We start duty about 6.55, right? At 6.55, there are people flanked all over the building, right? As soon as they get off the bus, Ms. Williams, you know what people say? Be quiet. Go straight to the cafeteria. No talking. But, right, then we get into the cafeteria, and then what? We do crazy quiet. stuff. Quiet time! Who is quiet? I, I think there was engagement food there, and it was like chaos, right? People just talking. If you have a whole lot, we have silent lunch. Or we do crazy stuff, like we'll put the little... Uh, uh, Flashlight, yeah. <laughs> you know, when it gets here, no talking. It was ridiculous, and then what makes it so bad is it'll get to red, and all the kids have to stop, but then the teachers sit back there, and they talk, right? And in middle school, I can really negotiate like, oh, we have to be quiet, but they get to talk, right? And then the student who is a little more aggressive, right, who is a little bit more independent thinker, like my daughter who's 10, she's going to be like, oh, excuse me. Do you all get to talk and we have to be quiet? Right? And then the first thing Ms. Cole's going to say is like, listen, little girl, I'm the adult and you follow the rules. No. You see what I'm saying? So again, particularly in middle school, when you're in this social being, you're trying to establish who you are, all right? The social club in the barbershop, the barbershop serves as a what? A haven. What is a haven? A safe place. Middle school is rough, right? you're going through a whole lot of different things, right? Unfortunately, I had to remind my teachers, and I thought, it's like, oh, women, you kind of understand this, right? Middle school girls, if they just started this whole cycle thing, I'm just saying, how many days, Miss Cole, are you gonna be normal? A lot. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, oh, you know. <laughs> Mm, out of 28, let's just say. 21. Maybe 21. Mm, I, and I'm just saying, and the reason why I'm saying this is because you have to understand, again, when we talk about those educational psychology classes and all that, you have to think of the anatomy. Because, again, if you're talking about a woman, you start, your body starts seven, seven. seven right? You're getting ready for it, right? Mm -hmm. If the cycle is coming up, then it's going to do what? It's going to come here, and then the hormones have to do what again? Balance out. Right, so out of 28 days. Normal seven. Normal seven. And I'm just and I'm just telling you, and I'm not trying to be graphic or ugly. It, that is true, right? So how do you then negotiate the learning space here? Right? Because if I'm talking about learning, that's not on my mind. And especially if I'm trying to get my body in check to understand this, right? I'm emotional, I'm upset, right? Oh my god, the girls, it was just like so much drama. It, girls. The guys, they're fighting is over, right? The girls, it's like, we don't like her, right? And so it's like every day, it's like 20 of them in my office. She said, well, what? Well, you know, Stephanie, but she's not even in here, right? Get her too. Like, oh, my God, right? So how do you look at all of those things and, again, interact with them accordingly? I, sometimes I had to tell my teachers, you know, kind of give in to the process. You understand it, right? But we don't want to do, all right? 
in a school where it encouraged to do what? Work independently. Work independently. In a beauty shop or a barber shop, we get to collaborate. In school, mm -hmm. particularly when we come back from Christmas, right, when we get into the testing mode, we start doing crazy stuff like this. <laughs> right, the room, the kids come back, the room, and it's like, uh, look, like a prison. It's like, what in the world? Right? Move your desk. No one, and it's like, okay, and so now what do you do? You create nothing. Because we said at the very beginning of the year, we want to be collaborative, we want to have team building. You come back after Christmas, every desk is moved, and there's a petition, right? All right? Individualized attention. When you're sitting in that chair, in that barber chair, in that beauty chair, it's all about you, baby. Nobody else. Right? What happens in school? Look at the comparison. Mr. Allen, read that for me. Most of the day is spent doing large group work with little attention to individual students. We pass out what? The worksheets? Ask if worksheets grow dendrites. <laughs> right? We pass it out in what? I do the instruction. I tell everybody what? The same thing. And then I say what? Do it. Just do it. Don't talk. Don't talk. And then I'm going to get mad if you ask me a question because I'm going to say what? Read the Read the instructions. I've already told you. Right? And my middle school teacher was like, what are you doing? Right? Because there's one that's going to say, I don't understand. Right? Because I didn't get it in the large group. I need the individualized right here, the guidance. I need you now to put your hand on my head and show me how it guide me through this process. But we're going to say, read the instruction. This is not elementary, and I don't understand why Miss Coles just babied you last year in the sixth grade. It's a crazy stuff. Right? We all need individualized attention. Right? And in the next one, there's a wide range of relevant topics. Right? There's no way that if you are in a middle school, school class right now that you can't be talking about Ebola, the same that you're talking about all this police brutality, right? You can't be talking about that without talking about the economy, right? But we stick it to one subject, one focus, and that's it, right? And kids are like, really? Because what they're doing while you're talking about that one subject, whether you let them use the phone or not, they're under the table. Yeah, she for real. Right? And the kids, you're like, is something funny? Because they're talking about you, right? Because, again, if we could co-narrate and talk about, you know, again, what happened to, again, in elementary school where we had a little circle and we said, what happened over the weekend? What was your day like, right? Oh, tell me something special, right? In middle school, everyone needs that reassurance that what? I am special. That my hairstyle, no matter how crazy it looks, because I messed it up and fell asleep with gum in my hair, <laughs> And they had to cut a plug. That's how I started growing a box, because it was like messed up, right? <laughs> and there has to be the teacher like, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Right? You have to give them the courage, short, tall, fat, small, whatever, right? And that is in the middle schools where we find that place of socialization. We have to be comfortable just stepping outside the box, right? But we don't, because everyone wants to be an individual, but everyone wants to be the same in middle school. Right. So how do I encourage that? Because, hmm, oh, I like that. Right? Even those crazy cookie outfits. Mm. Guess what? I need to give you, create you a dream. Ooh, you could be on Project Runway. That is it, girl. Uh, you might be saying, I don't know what it is, but it is. Right? Don't know what it is, but it is. Move on. Hashtag creativity. Right? Connect where they are. And then again, school what? What do we have? Many irrelevant topics, what? That are discussed in a decontextualized manner. Decontextualized. There's no way, again, what is war? Why, what is the premise of war, uh, Dr. Bauer? Why do we have war? What is war about? Whether it be the Civil War, the War of 1812, what is the crust of war? Boys deciding who's more manly. <laughs> 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 I did that just for you, Doctor. <laughs> Yeah, what did you say? Power and control. Power and control. And if, uh, I just over. said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Right? It's economics. It's about money, right? And money is power, right? So yeah, he wanted to do that to banter with me. But that's what happens. Again, how do you banter well, right? But in that same idea, how do you not 
say that to students. It's about money. It's about power. It's not about anything else other than who is going to be in power, and the power is controlled by money. All right? So again, looking at all of those things, um, I wanted to definitely go on this before it was time to go. The barbershop practices that may influence achievement in the classroom. All right? Allow African American males to what? Express what? Opinions. Out of opinions comes what? It, what? Fact. Can opinions turn into facts? Yes. They can, right? A fact, you have to then test it to make it a theory. And then how do we then change a paradigm, right? Next thing, relevant material to what? Real world experiences. Those young men that I have went from low achievement, because I had them from third grade to fifth grade, right? By the middle of the midterm year, of their third grade year, everyone in my class, whether they were in accelerating learning or resource was performing at 80% or higher on all of our state benchmarks, right? So then what happens is people then start coming in my class from the district office and other places assuming or trying to figure out the phenomenon. And so when, I, when they come in, it's like, oh, what seems to be the problem, right? Why are you just walking around here? So it's like, did you not think that they could do it or do you think that I'm not doing it, right? So there has to be some idea that I'm, what, inflating their grades. It was, you know, real crazy. Our uh, CRC uh, team person was, you know, is like the middle uh, management person that, you know, goes to the class and she's like, oh, and let's be careful that we don't inflate grades. This was like during a faculty meeting. And I was like, what? You're talking to me, right? We're not influencing or we're not inflating any grades. If you come to a shop, right, when you come, you come with a bad hair day, and what is the most important about leaving the beauty shop or the barber shop? You look with a good hair. Being transformed, right? So every day that they come in here, I'm working on heads, right? So that means they came in here a bad hair day, but everyone leaves looking sharp, right? At a barber shop, one thing about it, Miss Williams, when I really go to the barber shop, I didn't get to go for coming. I was trying. <laughs> Ran out of time yesterday. But when you get that hair done, or that barber puts that razor on that thing and make it, sh you look, you looking at me like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you keep walking. Look, now, the way you walked in is not the way you walk out. Because look, when you really get that hair, that buttermilk whip, you walk out like, <laughs> see y'all later, touch on. Right? <laughs> when those young men are transformed with that button, it's like, See you later. <laughs> I'll be back. Good looking out, right? It changes. So in that same sense, if students enter your class, right, with a bad hair day, a bad hair day is okay, but a bad hair year, somebody gotta go. Because <laughs> if you're working in my shop, right, because each one of you become, if I'm the principal, each one of you are stylists in my shop. And if you mess up a head, right, the people are gonna be like, oh, who did your hair? They ain't gonna say, Dr. Manson. They're going to say what? Heel shot. Ooh, don't go there. Right? So again, I needed to make sure that people that messed up people's heads had to go. Because you become now my walking billboard. And I encourage all of you to specialize. Because you can't specialize in everything. Right? Find the students that you specialize in. Right? Whether it be male, whether it be female, whether it be Asian, whether it be what? The more aggressive. You have to find your specialty, right? And then do what? Get all the training in that area, right? Get all of the training, and then that says what? When you go to Dr. Manson's shop, she specializes in what? Washing sets. Let my mama go, she goes and get that washing set, they put them rollers in, they take it out, she comb it, push it up, boom, let's go. Right? But there's nothing wrong with that, right? But if you go over here to Miss Williams' shop, Miss Williams specializes in what? Hmm. Color. Hmm. Remy. <laughs> Remy. Right? Whatever it is. And be the best at it, right? Because guess what? Their lives depend on it. Because every hand that you get right does what? It builds another relationship. Because if Dr. McMullen does the hands right that came to her, they then go and say what? Just like you said from the beginning, Boy, somebody I'm told you. Boy, so in a, particularly in a small rural community, it's about relationships. It's about what people say about you. So every parent says, oh, I tell you what, I want my children to go to her shop because she's good. She's good at what she does. She's good with them heads, right? 
she does it well, and guess what? Then you will be there for five, six, seven, eight, nine years, right? And then they'll say, you know what? My cousin said, you tell her, and you give them be like, I don't even know your cousin, right? And you go, yes, you do. Malika was in your class in 1986. <laughs> And it comes right back to you because then what you have done is you've set the precedence of your reputation, right? Because now everyone knows that I can do what? I can trust you with my head. I'm not going to let you in my head because I don't trust you with your head. Any questions? I think it's time to go. Oh, no. I'm too long. <laughs> questions, comments, concerns, anything? Now, what I'll do if, if somebody passes it around because there's an article that goes with this, I'll email everything to everyone. Right, there's an email and a PowerPoint, I'll email it to you. So Dr. Manson, if you get somebody just like send it around, I'll send it to you. Yes. Ed, do you think the barber shop faces some of the same difficulties in the HBCU, for example? In an age of an Obama can occupy the White House or I don't know, or whatever else, is it, is it losing its power as a social institution? Is other institutions get watered down? Um, Yes and no. I think one of the things is particularly, again, with the, the, the metaphoric idea of the HBCU and that old barbershop is the lack of resources, right? Because one of the things is we just use the old tools, right? Not because this is the only one we can. It might be just limited, you know, in that same regard, but there is some very much value there. And then again, some of it, particularly those old barbershops, are in communities that aren't as noted as this is a good place to go, right? Uh, I took our faculty, we were in Memphis, Tennessee um, a few months ago, and actually when I did my uh, dissertation, one of the barbers that I followed for quite some time, for several weeks, for about a month or two, was uh, Vernon Winfrey, which is Oprah Winfrey's father. It's in um, <laughs> a good part of Tennessee, <laughs> Nashville, right? So you're driving, and they're sitting there like, where are we going? It's like, just keep on, just keep on, right? Just, keep, just follow, right? You get there, and now what he's done is he's taken up that whole corner. He's made the barbershop in more than just a barbershop. He has a tutorial service there and some other things. However, when you're going in, people are like, oh, where are we going? But one thing about it is, because the service is so good, what? No matter what, lawyers, doctors, preachers, everybody comes, right? Because there's value. Your classroom has to almost be just like the barbershop. It's a greenhouse. What is in a greenhouse? Okay. Everything that you need, right? Everything that that flower needs to grow and live and survive and thrive is in that greenhouse, right? Let's go, because the next person is in the middle. Thank you so much. Thank you.